So hi, um, today I'll be presenting our paper titled Image Explorer Deployment, Understanding Text-Based and Touch-Based Image Exploration in the Wild. So individuals who are blind or visually impaired, also known as BVI people, heavily rely on alt text to access digital images. Creating those captions for images can be time consuming and cause lack of available captions. In the past, various tools and methods have been developed to make image captions more available, including crowdsourcing, web crawling, AI-driven techniques, and AI-human hybrid approaches. And we concluded that existing primary approaches for BVI users to consume image captions can be divided into two categories, text-based and touch-based. So text-based exploration presents information sequentially in a list, which is generic and familiar for users to use a screen reader to navigate them. Touch-based exploration, on the other hand, can convey richer information, including relative positions, object sizes, and more detail to be by users. This modality can be achieved by letting users perform touch gestures on touch screen, but it leads to a higher cognitive load and a longer exploration time and may cause users to overlook certain objects and images. But all above insights were obtained through lab controlled studies and which may not fully capture the complexities and natural user interactions encountered in everyday life. There exists a knowledge gap in how BVI users interact with and weigh against the two modalities when both are presented users simultaneously in the wild. And in this work, we aim to understand the nuance of user interaction with these modalities in uncontrolled environments, addressing overlooked aspects in lab setting, including multimodal information consumption and the real life challenges BVI users face. And specifically, we ask three sub research questions. First, what are the primary categories of images users explored with different modalities? Second is how do users use touch, touch exploration? And finally, why some users retain app usage while others do not? To answer this question, we deployed Image Explorer, a free publicly available iOS app on the App Store. It has a multi-layer touch-based interface and a text-based exploration interface, similar to Facebook's automatic alt text system. And let's take a look at the demo video. Image Explorer. Pick an image and explore. Example images. A hotel room with two, a person in a dress with a horse. A couple of women walk down a sidewalk. A Summary couple of game. women walk down a sidewalk. Image. Double tap to explore. A doll. Clothing. Fence. Plan. A hotel roar. A person in. Caption. A couple of women walk down a sidewalk. Tags. Plan. Leisure, shoe, luggage and bags, footwear, leg, gesture, back, count information, person, five, bench, two, handbag, one, positional information, in the middle center, one person, collapse, in the middle left, one person, collapse, in the middle right, three person, collapse, in the middle center, one bench, collapse, in the middle right, one bench, collapse, in the bottom left, one handbag, collapse, in the mid, in the in the in the in the middle center, in the middle center, label, person one, sub object, a woman is wearing a white shirt, sub object, the skirt is white, sub object, handbag, close information, blue no pattern, spring shirt, long sleeves, in the middle left, close sub 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 lay in the pet pet for cap flat tap, a couple caption, a couple of women, explore, button, thanks all. Cal, direct touch area. Person one, double tap to explore. Person two, double tap to exit handbag. Person, bench one. Person three, bench. Person one, double tap to explore. Showing sub objects of person one. A woman is wearing a white shirt. A woman is wearing, the skirt is white. Handbag, a woman, the skirt is white. In the first layer. So using the app, we collected real-world usage data and performed both qualitative and quantitative analysis to answer our research questions. In total, we collected five kinds of data. First is accessibility settings. 
we set an optional survey in the app to collect user accessibility settings, including voiceover, magnifier, spoken content, dictation, tag size, others, and now. The second one is customization settings like language and granularity of the results users would love to receive. The third one is app activity logs. So this captures actions including signing, image uploading, and other activities on navigating functions such as button pressed, mode switching, etc. The fourth one is text-based activity logs. Those include textual items that users look into, the text summary page. The final one is touch-based activity logs, which include exploration trajectories, gestures user performs like single or double tap, and layers that user dive into. And for the methods, and for the participants, uh, from March the 1st, 2023 to February the 10th, 2024, in total we have 371 users. They uploaded and explored 651 images. Among them, 97 opt in our IRB and provided valid accessibility responses to show that they are blind or visually impaired. Those 97 users generated 507 explorations on 487 self-uploaded images, and 91 exploration on six example images provided by the app. So all of our analysis are based on those 97 users. To answer our research question, we added three kinds of labeling to the explorations. I will give a brief overview of those labels and provide details when we go into results. First is exploration modality. So because our app design, users either export image through text mode or with both text and touch. We have 274 text only images and 233 touch, touch export images. Second is image content. We use seven labels to mark primary object and image and three labels to show image quality in terms of clarity. The, la the later one means how many discernible focus one image has. Finally is accuracy of captions manually examined by our research team. An inaccurate label denotes false positive captions. We categorize them as either first layer inaccuracy, where the label inaccuracy occurs in the first layer, or sublayer inaccuracy, where the label, label inaccuracy is located in a sublayer. So now I will go into results, and let's first answer the question of what. We analyzed the association between images exploration modalities and their primary categories of content. In the user uploaded images, person, object, and setting are top three images. Settings refer to images featuring environment. We can see here we have two other categories, error and unclear. Error refers for images with blurry content or too dark to be read. And unclear refers to images with good quality but it's hard to find primary subjects. Regarding user preference patterns for image exploration modalities based on primary object labels, users tend to use a touch-based method to explore images related to person, document, and setting. While this is the opposite for object based on the ratio in touch explore group versus ta text group. It is possible that for setting images, there often are multiple objects and users need to understand their spatial layout. So touch can be more helpful. For target number labels, we see a higher ratio of tax exploration in single target and no target. Compared with multi-target ones, single target images have a focused subject. And from our observation, textual description can already efficiently convey necessary information about the subject. The next question is how. Let's first look at user finger moving pattern. 86.7% of users spend less than 150 seconds touch exploring an image. Moreover, users tended to slow down and linger over specific areas when they re received audio feedback or when they are interested in some objects. We also noticed that users move their fingers following a circular or zigzag pattern when exploring. In terms of users' reactions when facing inaccurate captions, 431 explorations have no inaccuracy in the captions, and 38.7 of them 
percent of them were explored with touch. In contrast, among the 147 explorations with inaccurate captions, 44.9% were explored with touch. We also observed that when users received an inaccurate caption from the app, they will retake another photo to try whether the caption could improve. And a lot of the times, the retaken images had higher quality in terms of camera aiming angles and position of targets. For users took, if a user first took image A, for example, those captions are like this. The user look at the tax summary page only. And then we discovered the user took image B, which had captions like this. The user used touch exploration this time. The later one has better camera aiming angle and provides longer captions. And lastly, for the third research question of why, to understand user retention, we compared the active logs of first-time dropout users and active users. We define first-time dropout users as individuals who only explored a single image and refrain from further app usage. Active users are users who explored more than four times in our app. There are 37 first-time dropout users and 28 active users. Compared with active users, first-time dropouts encountered more inaccurate labels. They also uploaded more images with content challenging for current models to capture, like document and unclear. They also have lower object discovery rate than active users. So here, the object discovery rate is calculated using kind of discovered object divided by total object. And based on the findings, we discuss our lessons learned in the deployment and the implications for future research on designing image caption tools. For current computer vision models, certain categories of objects, especially those with cultural differences, are prone to misidentification. So for instance, Andorra Amon doll was mistakenly detected as a teddy bear. So future work could explore how to provide richer dataset to accommodate different cultures to create adaptive image captions for different people. We can better incorporate users' contacts into prediction to provide personalized captions. For example, when users use touch exploration and pause or slow down in the process, it could signal that they're interested in that region or they think the caption is incorrect. And in response to either intention, the system could run another prediction with a different model. So future work could explore ways to provide personalized or potentially generate captions on the fly according to users' background, contacts, and usage behaviors on the app. And thirdly, in the scope of our study, we primarily focused on text-based and touch-based modalities. However, additional interactive modalities could be helpful like conversational interfaces. This method can lower the cognitive load of touch interface while can get more detailed context. And finally, let's talk about limitations. All findings are presented in terms of percentages, and we acknowledge that without the difficult tests to determine significance, these results should be interpreted with caution. The absence of statistical significance testing limits our ability to draw firm conclusions about the generalizability of these findings to the broader population. Future research could address this limitation with a larger user size and employing statistical methods to validate their observed trends. While we attempt to interpret the results derived from qualitative data by reducing users' motivation, it is imperative to note that we lack a comprehensive understanding of users' underlying intentions and do not possess a definitive truth. Active users who use the app more than four times may contribute to a larger portion of data sets and cause bias in our detection of user behavior. It is also possible that fully blind users and low vision users have different needs that cannot be captured by our analysis due to the fact that we do not have full demographic data. And thank you for listening. Feel free to scan the QR code to download the app to try.